Howdy everyone, and welcome to another of my weird lens reviews, although I'm cheating here because it's not actually a lens at all, it's a hole. I'm looking at the brand new Thingify Pinhole Pro S11, an 11mm pinhole lens for mirrorless cameras, available in the Sony E, Fuji X or Micro Four Thirds mounts. You can also get a digital SLR camera version for Canon, Nikon, Sony A-mount or Pentax cameras, but the digital SLR version, the PPS-37, has a much less exciting 37mm focal length. The pinhole can't get as close to the camera's sensor on a digital SLR. After a highly successful Kickstarter campaign, this device is now available on Indiegogo for 60 US dollars, along with a selection of other pinhole lenses the manufacturer produces. That's not exactly a cheap price, you can actually make a pinhole lens yourself, although one with such a wide angle as this will be challenging. But the idea behind this device is that it's nicely made and machined for you out of aluminium, it looks cool on a black camera and the pinhole is very precisely cut for best results. And it's pretty neat to have such a wide angle image from a pinhole lens too, if you have a mirrorless camera that is. There are optional extras you can get from Thingify, like an aluminium lens cap to replace the plastic one that they give you for free, which I didn't like actually because you have to screw it in. They also offer UV filters for the lens's 58mm filter thread, Sounds like a silly idea, but actually, using a filter will offer you protection from dust and moisture reaching your camera's sensor through the pinhole. As you can imagine, the actual aperture of this lens is minuscule. The last pinhole lens I tested had an aperture of f152, and this is in the same sort of ballpark I think. The Pinhole Pro's pinhole size is 0.14mm. That means that shooting indoors or in the dark is out of the question unless you're using a tripod. If you're shooting outside on a sunny day, you'll still need an ISO of about 3200 if you want to shoot handheld, and even higher if you're shooting in the shadows. The tiny aperture also means that your images, naturally, will come out extremely soft with desaturated colours. That's really the kind of look we're going for here, though. It also means the dirtiness of your camera's sensor will be brought to your attention. Wide angle lenses are bad enough at bringing out sensor dirt in your pictures, even without such tiny apertures. The all encompassing depth of field of such a tiny aperture means that everything is, quote unquote, in focus with this lens. There are no controls on it at all. You just shoot away with a very high ISO. I tried this 11mm version of the lens on my full frame camera, a Sony a7R2, and as you can see, you certainly don't get full coverage at all on the full frame, this really is a lens for APS-C cameras. But the field of view is still really nice and wide, despite the crazy vignetting. If you want some interesting optical effects, then point this thing at the sun or another bright point of light for some absolutely wild flaring. I kind of like the images this lens produces, it feels like a breath of fresh air for me to be trying it out after all the sharpness tests I normally go through with conventional optics. I wonder if Thingify will do well selling these devices, or if they'll just get tired of the whole business. This wide angle lens is pretty overpriced, but nonetheless very nicely made, cool and enjoyable to use if you're after a bit of a change.